Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ken 7 podcast. Now, at the weekend um, on Sky TV, there was a programme uh, called Tom Seals Presents and um, they interviewed Sir Kenny Dalglish, obviously we were affiliated to, and Tom very kindly let me sing on the show and joining me today for a chat about all things football, all things music, which is brilliant for me because that's what I love, is Mr Tom Seals himself. Hi, Tom, how are you doing? Yeah, hello, mate. I'm very well. Thanks for having me. I see the guitars in the background. Are you uh, going to give us a tune at some point? Or are they just for show? Literally just for show, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I used to have them hung up in the lounge, like to attract babes, yeah. you know, like to impress babes when I brought them back. But oh, was, right, yeah, yeah. Long gone now, you know. Good answer. Now your <laughs> missus is sat watching from the other side. <laughs> no, the missus is downstairs. Um, anyway, um, how are you, mate? So, obviously... Well, what we're going to do is we'll talk about football first. Okay, um, yeah. Don't get too technical on me, Gav. I know, I, I know. We, you've warned me already. But um, I've just Googled yeah. the offside rule, so we're fine. <laughs> Great gag. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, from the, from watching the, the programme, which you had Sir Kenny on, you're mm. obviously a Liverpool fan. Now, where did that come from? Well, my two uncles were both Liverpool, well, both Liverpool fans. And actually, I kind of, I've got a bit of a torn, you know, a bit of a torn affiliation because I'm from Crew, So right. I was brought up actually going to watch Crew Alex all the time. And of course, Crew Alex had a real strong link with Liverpool. They did, um, yeah. We used to get players from there. With the yeah. And sort of academy link up thing. I think there was, yeah. We got a lot of the young lads and I think they still do. You know, they had Harry Wilson a few years ago. Yeah. Um, he went to Crew for, for a, I think he went on loan for a season. But when I was there, it was when I think we just got John Semmelbor on, on loan for the season. And at that time, that's that pre season, uh, Liverpool also came to play Crew. And they did a couple of years running. So that, at that time, there must have been a real strong link. Well, we had um, so, Danny Murphy from Crew back yeah, in the day. Murphy, and then yeah. also, yeah. I think we had a young player called Phil Charnock who was yeah. from Southport, where I lived. Mm. He played, I think he went on loan at Crew as well. So there was some yeah. sort of formal arrangement there, I think. Mm. Yeah, there definitely was. So we, so I, I was sort of brought up going to Crew every weekend, but then both my uncles were going to Liverpool and it was always much more glamorous than going to watch Crew because it was like, oh, it's the big thing. So slowly but surely, I just you know morphed into being a Liverpool fan. More and obviously, yeah. but you were never, not really, because, you know, yeah. <laughs> Come on, crew won the playoff final one year. Oh, right, well, that's pretty. You know, <laughs> so if I wanted the glory, mate, I would have stuck with the Alex. Um, but no, it's, it's yeah. I just and then the first time I went to Anfield, I just remember walking in and just just falling in love with the place. And uh, just a shame I don't get to go that much anymore. With you know, with like you being a being a professional musician, we're always working on a Saturday. So we. Uh, well, that, that's the thing. I mean, I, I quite often I'll have to leave like half an hour before the end. Yeah, of the I, I do mm. go. But some t- it depends on where my, my gig is. Yeah. Um, mm. I usually, I'll have to leave. But, I mean, quite often, I, I can't go, which is, uh, yeah. mm. is is great for my cousin, who basically <laughs> benefits from my season ticket when I can't go. And he's who like, gets all the tickets. Oh, he's yeah. like made up. Yeah, totally. Living the dream. <laughs> yeah. um, so when you when you think back to Liverpool yeah. and you... Oh, you're, you're, working in, you're working in Scotland tonight, Gav. That's great. <laughs> Um, Sorry, mate, I spoke over then. Yeah. It's all right. When you think about um, Liverpool and like, when you were younger and stuff, who, was you, who would you mm. describe as your favourite player? Well, I didn't really see him play that much, but I always had this thing about Robbie Fowler, and I guess that's because he's got the, the sort of God icon and the God status that my uncle sort of passed down to me, that Robbie Fowler became a real hero. But it, it's so obvious, but it was Stevie Gerrard. You yeah. know, there, was, there was nobody else, and I remember actually running on the pitch at the end of the crew Liverpool pre-season yeah. and I got Stevie G to sign a programme. No. So I've, so I've got that. So it was, it's, it's an obvious answer, but it's got to be Stevie G. Well, I mean, he was it, it, arguably Liverpool's best ever player. It's depending on the era you came from, it's either Kenny Dalglish or, or Stevie G. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, of course. Well, I was going to say, there's no argument, really. It's, but then I remembered the podcast that, you know, and the and the YouTube channel that we're on here. So, well, it's, yeah, between the two of them. I think um, I actually was lucky enough to, to do a gig for Stephen Gerrard. Cool. Um, yeah. I did a gig. He was having a party for, um, I can't remember who it was now, but it was it was at a bar and he needed some music. And I got to mm. meet him. And um, yeah. he, when I walked in, he went, oh, here he is, the voice. 
<laughs> which, which didn't settle my nerves at all because then I thought, Christ, he's actually needed. No, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, the gutting thing was he he was having a house built, and um, he got in touch again after that gig and said, "Would you come and sing at the sort of opening of my house? I'm having the family. Right. I want you to sing." So I got invited to 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 Stephen Gerrard's house to sing in mm. his house, and I had a wedding. <laughs> I couldn't go. I had to get, I give it to Bjorn. Well, Bjorn went. Really? Yeah, Bjorn. I, say, I must have also been busy that day, Gav, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I didn't I know someone you went, mate. I didn't oh, know. Yeah. Bjorn okay. did it with um, Ben Smith and said it was right. a wow. fantastic night. Um, obviously, Bjorn's a big uh, Chelsea fan. For those He's a Chelsea Bjorn fan. Army. Don't give it to him. Bring me next uh, time. That yeah. I will do, totally. Uh, but hopefully yeah. I'll be able to do it myself. Uh, I was yeah, we'll do it together. Excited. I got uh, asked to uh, I got asked to do the same thing the same thing exactly at Ricky Lambert's house and right, okay. it was the day that Ricky had left Liverpool. Right. I was doing a gig in Nuxford and he'd he'd come in with his wife and they were on the way to the airport and they'd nipped into this place that I was playing and they just you know they had dinner and whatever and obviously I went over and said oh I'm a bit of a fan you know and luckily he'd seen me play so he gave me I think he gave me a bit more time than he may have done and um, we got chatting and he said oh I'm having a bit of a leaving party I said oh well I guess you're leaving then and he said oh um, yes um, and uh, and yeah, yeah when they moved house I got invited and I, I couldn't do it which was a shame. Oh. But, um, I, was yeah, like, I, the I, I made sure the groom knew that I was missing a gig at Stephen Gerrard's house for, <laughs> yeah. for his wedding. And he was very, yeah. to be fair to him, he was very grateful. And he, he actually said to me, look, if you want to go and do it, I'll let you do it. And you, if you get someone else, but I would never wow. do that to someone. It's someone's you mm. know, it's the biggest day in their life. So, um, yeah. so that aside, um, so mm. we were way off track there. Off on a work tangent. And I won't tell you that I'm doing a gig for Gary Neville in a few weeks, but anyway, oh, go wait, on. Really? Gary Neville's <laughs> a massive music fan. He plays guitar. Get him up to play guitar with you. Well, I will come on to it a bit later, but we're doing the Tom Seals Presents idea with him live. But let's, we'll talk about that. Let's talk football. Let's just talk football. So we've just had a season, mm. either one to forget or one you'll never forget. I'm not sure which mm. one it is. Um, what did you think about the the way that it went? And obviously, you know, we can we're, we're much happier now because mm. of the way it finished. But well, exactly, I, I I couldn't believe it, and I don't think many people could really. Like you say, it was a season to forget until ninety percent of the way, mm. <laughs> and then be. the last couple of games, where did we pull that from? Who knows? Yeah, thank God for Allison's head. That's all I can say. Were you watching that game live by any chance? <laughs> no, I didn't see it. No, I didn't see it. I just remember my phone going mental. And a few people were texting me saying, oh my God, have you seen this? We were filming actually and I didn't get a chance to watch it. And I went on Twitter and it, it obviously was just nuts. I guess you were watching it, were you? I was watching it with my um, my father-in-law who's a Man United fan. Right. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's, a, he's a good Man United fan. You know, he's, he's very, he actually wants... Liverpool to win went big right. for me and for you know mm. for, for for Ivy my daughter, but um, yeah. yeah he was I was like I was spirit when I saw Allison go up I was like oh this never worked I remember saying yeah. this <laughs> what are you doing you know ah, it's just it's gone you might yeah. as well forget about it and then all of a sudden I was like I'm running around the house uh, like all, yeah. the, all the girls came in from the other room we were like what's going on what's happened I'm like, <laughs> the goalkeeper's just gone um, yeah. so it was uh, it was pretty amazing but yeah. I think. Mean, Looking forward to next season. What I mean, do mm. you think, are you quite positive towards for, for next season? Well, I think we've got to be really. You know, look at the season we had before this one and the players that we had that weren't out injured all year. I think ultimately, is it going to come down to that? If we can keep them fit, get Van Dyke back, who will be next to him? I don't know. Who do, who do you think will be next to him next season? It depends who's fit. I mean, you can't you can't get. Let's uh, say they're all fit. Well, I think if they're all fit, I, we don't know what who, who Canate is yet. We don't know whether well, he's, yeah. he's, mm. he's who he is. But you know, he, he's promising, obviously. But whether he'll go straight in, I don't know. I, I was I, quite surprised they brought him in. Really, I know we need someone, but if you think if we look how well the two young lads have done Phillips. towards the end of the season, yeah, yeah, Phillips in particular. I, th I think the feeling is that Phillips is going to stick around. I watched an interview. Mm. I watched one of these with him and someone from the Echo. right. Day and mm. they haven't said anything to him. Um, right. and I don't know whether that's good or bad, but I read into yeah. that. Well, it's business as usual. You know, we don't need yeah. to because you're part of the squad. I think mm. Williams will probably go on loan because he, he would benefit. Yeah. Um, mm. But I always feel that if everyone's fit, Jürgen favours Matip and Van Dijk. And yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm. 
Um, but the problem is he's 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 had his problems, hasn't he? Very yeah. Every mm. season he has a he has a problem. So I mean, I believe he played for months with an injury when right. Van Dyke mm. got injured that game. He picked up an injury yeah. in the same game, but he carried on playing. Uh, well, yeah. And Gomez wow. got injured, and it you know things got worse. And he knew he had to play, and he, he basically mm. just played until he couldn't anymore. Which fair play to him because he gets a lot of stick, and a lot of people say you know yeah. come sit out and what have mm. you. Yeah, but the start of the season it, it was Gomez, wasn't it? That that and Van Dyke didn't they start? Was, they started it, last season. It, together? it actually was uh, Gomez and Van Dyke. You know, mm. and, um, just, maybe at that time they were the preferred two. Maybe, uh, maybe. So, I mean, who, yeah. who knows what's going on in his head? But um... if you're enjoying this video so far, please show your support for the Ken Seven channel by subscribing, clicking the like button and also clicking the notifications button as well to get future broadcasts. If you could also share the video on your Twitter and Facebook account, that will show YouTube's algorithm that you like our content. Have you heard about Ken7 merchandise? The link is in the description of this video. We have premium fanware for fans covering Liverpool, Celtic and Scotland and it's fanware for young and old. So we have t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, caps, mugs, you name it, we've got it. Just something else to remember, every purchase that is made on our website, we donate to the Marina Dalgalish Appeal. So you're helping a great cause as well. Mm. We'll move on to uh, music, mate. So okay. we've obviously got this show, Tom Seals Presents, yep. and if anyone hasn't seen mm. it, you should go and watch it because it's fantastic. Tom's brilliant. He's an incredible musician anyway, but he's a great presenter as well. He's, the two of them merging together. He, he's made for, destined for greatness in my eyes. Oh, thanks. Uh, Very kind of you. Um, we recently did the Kenny Dog Leash one and that was great fun. Mm. And, you know, where did you get the idea behind the show? Well, the idea was born out of lockdown, really. So, of course, last March when the world came to a halt, as you know, everybody in our music arts industry had all their work cancelled and, and that was it. The, the sort of year looking ahead, there was no work. So what do you do? So I was just about to film a pilot for a show called The Tom Seals Show, which in my mind was this real big production, huge proper TV show where I take the best bits of various TV shows that we that we like so take the music element of Jules Holland take the chat element of some celebrities sat on the sofa having a drink took you know a bit of a risque conversation of Graham Norton but also like the silly features and the the funny bits that some people absolutely hate but some people love of Sunday brunch and I thought if you put all of them bits together have a laugh a couple of celebrity guests and some great music that's a winning formula that I've not really seen on TV yeah um, so anyway, we, we were going to film that of course, COVID put a stop to the pilot being filmed. So I was like, oh, well, I'd got my band booked for that weekend. I'd got the production team booked. And I said, look, boys, if you are fancy doing something, obviously there'll be no money in it. But if you fancy a laugh, let's do something. And my mum was having her garden done. And I said, before you have your garden done, do you mind if I just ruin your grass and put five cameras in, a production van, a drum riser, drums, a full band? And luckily, she's, she's cool. She just said, yeah, I do what you want. So we ended up doing it every week because everyone enjoyed it. We did it for six weeks. And over the six weeks, we did this full production TV quality thing in my mum's garden, ran by the guy in the van on the front. He was running it all from different, you know, computers and stuff. And we got about a quarter of a million hits over the six weeks that we did it. And we did all these virtual duets with Katie Tunstall in Los Angeles, Matt Lucas, we did one with. And I just called in a few sort of, you know, celebrity favours to get the ball rolling with it. Anyway, we got it to someone at Sky and they liked it and said, well, here you go, here's a 13-week series, do what you want. So it was half an hour a week, but we, we well, the honest answer is we didn't have the budget to go make this full production thing well, you that, had in I, mind, yeah. that I had in mind. So I didn't want to call it Tom Seals present, um, Tom Seals show, because to me, that's the big, all the singing one. and dancing, that's the big show, which... Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, I'll be on the BBC in five years um, on Saturday Night Telly. That's my aim. But we had been offered this opportunity of 13 weeks. And I was like, well, I can't turn it down, but there's no money in this. So where's the money come from? So we had to sort of think about it and think, right, well, let's adapt. We're not going to get the celebrity guests in person because of COVID. So it'll have to be on Zoom, which has got so many limitations anyway. Um, 
so there was all these things. Eventually, we, we came up with the idea of Tom Seals Presents. So like the Desert Island Discs thing, where we talk about celebrities' favourite songs, and then they play them. Again, a different, an idea that I've never seen is talking about favourite songs, and then the band play them live. And I thought that was a really nice concept. Um, so that's what we did. So 13 weeks, 13 guests, each picking three songs. So we had 39 songs to learn. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, it was a lot of work. Um, but we had some, we've had some amazing guests, you know, in, including let, Sir Kenny. Let me, uh, let me just ask you about that. So how, mm. how hard has it been getting guests to come on or getting in, even getting in touch with them? Because I, I have a little mm. bit of it when I try and get people to do podcasts with yeah. me for and some mm. channels. So it's, yeah, I think, me. well, I, was it easier for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you've been trying to get me for years, Gav. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think the, the honest thing really is that one thing always leads to another. Once you've got one, it snowballs to the next one. Mm. So, of course, over the last few years, I've worked with Jules Holland and Jamie Cullen, Gregory Porter, and a couple of people. And slowly but surely, once you've got one name, you get the second name, and then the next one leads to the next thing. So, uh, when it came to the Tom Seals Presents idea, the first uh, the first guest actually to say yes was John Cleese from. Yeah, Fault and in the end, it, it didn't happen. Yeah, Fawlty Towers won final. And John Cleese was the first guest to say yes, and I knew his PA from something that we'd done years ago. And in the end, he was in the Caribbean, and we just couldn't get the times right when we needed to do it. But at, the, at that time, I'd got a yes from John Cleese. So that meant I went to the next person. I went to Anton Dubeck from Strictly and said, I've got a yes from John Cleese. Um, will, will you do it? And he was like, oh, well, if John Cleese is doing it, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it was, I guess it was a little bit of that. And all of a sudden, we had way more than the thirteen guests right. that we needed, uh, which may will, you know, which may lead on to a. Have you, are they in the film. bag for a future a future time? Is that what you're thinking? Have you handpicked and gone? Well, we'll save that that one for. Yeah, and and of course, you know, we've we've had to think about the thirteen as a as a whole, and what we we wanted to get a real variety of people. I didn't just want musicians to talk about because actually, I think musicians talking about their favorite songs is a bit boring because. We kind of know what they're gonna like, really, because if it, me and you, Gav, when we sing a song, we've got to like it, or we don't do it. Mm. Or someone's paid us a load of money to like well, it. Like you know, it so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But ultimately, the, whatever sort of style you go towards, you've got to love it. You've got to feel it. Otherwise, you're just not going to enjoy it. So I think musicians are kind of—it's a bit of an obvious thing what they like listening to. Whereas I was chatting to David Coulthard, you know. Formula One legend, and, and I'm asking him what songs he listens to before a race, and I just think that's quite interesting. Or next week on the show, I've got Diane Abbott, the politician, right. and I'm saying, and I'm saying to Diane Abbott, what's the role of music in your life? And she to a more relaxed mood, I'm guessing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, but I just think it's fascinating, and because one of the things I remember, there was a viral video that you will have seen of Donald Trump walking out dancing to the YMCA, mm. and as soon as I watched that video, I thought, who picked that song? <laughs> like there must have been a conversation imagine this there must have been a conversation at the White House someone sat around the table and they've said I know a song that we'll play let's play the YMCA and that, if you think about it that must have happened right but I, so, I, I think that was him he's I suspect that, it was I, yeah. he's well picking that song because no one else is <laughs> yeah, I mean exactly. as good as it is it's yeah. just not it's not aged well in terms of no. See it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you got that jilted dancing <laughs> yeah. that he was doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just thought, you know, especially uh, uh, with Diane Abbott, I, one of the questions I actually say to her is, is there a conversation? You know, do you sit down, well, did you, when Jeremy Corbyn was running for prime minister, did you sit down and think of songs to go and play at rallies? And she said, yes, there was there was a conversation where we'd all sit around and talk about song choice. And I just think that's fascinating. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. Where else did you learn stuff like that? I just yeah. think that's cool. No. And actually, it turns out that it was Jeremy Corbyn's son who picked all right. the music. Um, oh. It's interesting. Yeah, so it's, it's been it's been great. And, you know, th there's been a real variety of guests and there's been some great song choices. There's been some horrendous song choices. Um, in terms but it's been, of you singing the song, which... Well, in terms of... I told people there was no limits, there was no barriers, just literally give me three songs that you'd like, whether it's your favourite songs or songs you've got a story about or whatever it is, just give it to me. So I was on Zoom with Tom Grennan, who was, uh, of course, number one in charts a few weeks ago. And 
for whatever reason, he hadn't been passed the message on from his management what our conversation was. So he didn't know he had to pick three songs. So I'm sat there and said, right, Tom, what's your favorite? give me your favourite song. And he's like, oh, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, um, just pulled one out the top of his head. And the second one, he, he does. And then the third one, he says, am I allowed to sort of stitch you up a bit here? And I went, yep, yeah, go on, away you go. He says, right, I want you to do My Name Is by Eminem. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, God. So, you know, there's been some, there's been some, um, you know, uh, suspect suspect choices. Let's say. Well, the the, the the brilliant thing about from watching the show is that you have adapted some of the songs and done your own mm. version. And one that, I mean, you've done it quite a few times and they, they sound fantastic, but one that particularly sticks into mind and I texted you about it was you did a, a version of Depeche Mode, um, Just Can't mm. Get It Off, but you did it almost as a love song and it really yeah. worked like that. Yeah, that's the surprising thing, that some things you go, oh, this is great. And uh, they're actually going in my set now for I'm going on tour in the autumn. And at, when we sat the other night planning the set list, I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to put some of these songs in. Yeah. And never six months ago would I said that a Depeche Mode song would really be going good. in my set, which is ultimately jazzy, bluesy, swingy, boogie-woogie. It's song. really good. We well, wouldn't be putting that in, you know. If you're watching this, that is well worth going and seeking out that um, that episode to see that version, because I absolutely loved it. It was uh, brilliant. So you've just mentioned your, your tour, or something I was mm. going to ask you about. I mean, what, what's the um, what's the info for that? For that? Well, I'm so excited. It's... I feel like a lot of things lead up to other things. You know, when with the pandemic hit, I was so busy on a certain type of work that other areas of my work that I've always wanted were, were lacking. And the, when all my work stopped and we started doing the TV thing, it gave me opportunity to work on other things and to sort of think, actually, what do I really want? And actually, one thing I've always wanted but never really pushed for is to do theatre shows. I'd love to go, I think that my style of show and you've seen, I just sit and talk. And, uh, it's, and I like talking, I like telling stories, I like playing some great songs with a great band. And that really holds up well, I think, to a theatre show. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought, you know what, let's let's go out and, and try and get some theatres. And I managed to get a, um, a bit of an in with a company called Live Nation, the world's biggest promoters who have got Ticketmaster and loads of, you know, if you've ever gone to see a big show at an arena, I guarantee it'll be with Live Nation or Ticketmaster. Yes. Um, anyway, they, they took a bit of a chance on old Tommy Boy from Crew, and we're, we're heading out on some uh, some theatre dates. So, yeah, there's there's one in Manchester in September, and then the rest are in October. Uh, but if you go to my website, tomseals.co.uk, they're all on there. They're all like seven or 800 capacity theatres, so they're nice sizes. Um and I can't wait. So if you know 700 friends in Malvern, wherever that is, um, <laughs> yeah. please, please send them along. <laughs> you, um, yeah, I mean, you're obviously looking back to getting playing in front of audiences. Mm. Um, what, what What's the format of the show like? Is it, are you going to be chatting and, and or is it more just like mm. a gig? No, it's going to be, a, a, the, what we're saying is it's going to be a, an evening of, you know, stuff that you know, jazzy, bluesy, swingy stuff that you will definitely know with some nicer versions of songs that you won't expect, a bit like what we've already spoke about. Some new original material of mine, I've just released a song called Kissing In Between The 45s, um, which is a sort of real retro feel good. Uh, it sounds, it's, it's a really nice sound. It's kind of a bit different to what I've done before. It's a bit more um, pop, a bit more modern. So have a listen to that. Um, and also some behind the scenes stories from the, TV show. There's a really funny story with Diana, but which you're gonna to have to come and watch the show because it's not in the it's not in the show. It's what happened off camera. So there's a few little funny things that have happened off camera, um, which I'm looking forward to telling people about. So yeah, it just be just be a good a good laugh. And I've got the incredible you know my incredible band with me who who are amazing. As you know, you've seen them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. I, I can't wait really. Um, just before I let you go, I've got a couple of things I wanted to ask you about, and it popped into my head. You were on The Voice. Um, I was. Back in the day. What was you tell, talk, talk me through your experience of The Voice, because I actually sing at The Voice nearly every year mm. as a yeah. standing singer before you guys come in, the contestants. So I yeah, do. At least, you, at least you get a turn, though, mate. That's <laughs> yeah, but they're told to turn when I do it. <laughs> they're not doing yeah. it out of the goodness of the I was told. I was told they were told to turn for me. That's the only reason I did the show. <laughs> So tell me through that experience, because obviously The Voice is a massive show and people will probably have watched your your mm. audition and thought, why yeah. haven't you turned for him? So, Well, 
can we say? How can we say this without getting into trouble, Gavin? Um, it's trouble. Well, it's there. Uh, well, I got scouted for The Voice and The X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and all of these shows every year. Every single year they've asked me to go on the show. And I've always said no, not out of any other reason than I... But no, I've seen the way they've sort of manipulated some of the acts, which I felt I didn't like. Um, or, you know, you can see through the story that unless you've got a story, you're not going to do well. That's the reality of it. So well, I was on X Factor and they gave me a story. <laughs> okay. Was, what what was your story? Singer. Now, I, I, oh, I right, okay. told them I was a singer and they went, oh, you do weddings. Oh, you're the wedding singer. No, 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 I'm not the wedding singer. No, 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 I'm not the wedding singer. No, no, no. Every right. single stage until I was, fuck it. Yeah, I'm the wedding singer. Right. Okay. Yeah. So well, I yeah. Yeah. There has to be an angle. Um, and I play the piano. Ultimately, I'm a piano player that sings, or am I a singer that plays the piano? Who knows? I, I used to be a piano player that sings, but now I feel like my voice is maybe taking over. I don't know. But the point is that the piano is very much part of my act as well as my voice. And before the voice went over to ITV, I they asked me to do it, but they didn't want me to play the piano to start with. They wanted me to sing at first and then introduced the piano as a bit of a surprise in the later rounds. Right. Um, and I didn't like that because I, firstly, I feel very comfortable sat at the piano. I don't think I would to 10 million people stood up because it's not what I do. So I was always just a bit hesitant. Singers, you get there, there. I was, I was saying, he was singing from that I know, video. I mean, I, did a, I did a podcast with him, not a Ken Seven podcast with him. I did a podcast with another podcast that I used to do mm. and talked to him through that voice thing. And, and he- but Ken Six. <laughs> no, it was called um, This Is The One <laughs> podcast where we just used to interview actors and stuff. Mm. And um, he he was very, you know, he said, I know how that came across, but what they did is they'd ask me questions to get a Lead-in questions, yeah. And then they mm. just edited it so that it all looked like I was like, I'm, I, the way he said it, it was like, I'm sick, you know, look at my life. But yeah. You know, and the funny thing is I know Dean really well and I know that at times he said stuff like that, but it's a joke between me and him where yeah. he's charging it mm. to me and I'm like, yeah, you're a dick sort of thing. And that's yeah. that's how he is. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, did they, they didn't do anything. I can't remember whether I saw your VT before you played. I, I just remember seeing you play and thinking, oh, Tom's though. And then... Um, well, it was actually quite funny because the... Um, actually, the, the funniest thing of all of this, Gav, is that they... Because they, when we when you play with the band, for those people that aren't musical, obviously to keep it in time, the drummer wears a, a thing in his ear which is clicking in time, and the band play to that click. But this metronome in your ear means that you can cut things out if you need, and if you were to cut that out and join them bits two together, because it's still in time, yes, it'll sound like you've not missed a beat. Yeah. So when I went out there, and I wasn't cocky, I was just confident that I thought in my head. I know I've got through. So, you know, I don't think 10 million people are going to watch this. Just go and enjoy it. So I went out there and really enjoyed my audition and did a great piano solo. Da, 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 whatever. Didn't get through. But the one thing that I thought, well, you know what? I've got a show reel here from yeah. ITV with a yeah. set that costs millions, cameras that cost millions. And actually, I didn't sing that great, but bloody hell, the piano solo was good. So at least that will go out to 10 million people and whatever. Sat down on the Saturday night. Here we go, Gavin. Boy, you're going to watch me here. They, they cut, cut it out. And he, he cut the piano so much. Oh, <laughs> my God, mate. Yeah. So the whole experience was uh, was different. But the, the one thing that came out of that was I got about 10 offers to have an agent and a manager the next week. And, uh, again, things snowball. And I'm quite lucky, really, that I'm not coined with, oh, it's Tom Sills from The Voice. Because I honestly don't think that, at that time, I'd not played Ronnie Scott's, you know, the world's most famous jazz club, which has always been my dream. If I was Tom Seals from The Voice, with that kind of stigma that gets attached with those shows, would I be playing Ronnie Scott's? Would yeah. I be playing Birdland on Broadway in New York? No, I honestly don't think I would. Yeah. So I got the exposure for a couple of minutes of primetime TV on a Saturday, which is sort of invaluable. I got connections, contacts, but I think I got away with that stigma. So yeah. I'm very happy about it that what happened happened. At the time, I was disappointed. And I just felt a bit stitched up more than anything. I wasn't like, oh, my God, my life's over, my career's over because I didn't get through on The Voice. I just laughed about it yeah. because I just felt like, 
how I think I'm quite switched on, but even I got a bit stitched up with this one. Yeah, so, I mean, you I can't know, believe you so. cancelled a gig in, in LA or wherever mm. it was, San Francisco. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's nuts. Just before I let you go, um, you mentioned it before, you, uh, you're you doing some stuff with Jules Holland. What's, uh, mm. What is that and what's that like, you know, but um, you're working with Jules Holland? Well, he's my hero, so it's slightly mental every single time that I get asked to do it. So, a couple of years ago, I got invited on a show called the Jules Holland Boogie Woogie and Blues Spectacular. And it was two pianos, dueling pianos, and it was six piano players. So the idea is that Jules plays every song with one of the piano players. And then slowly but surely, once he's done that, he invites a second, like two piano players on. So there's three of them. And then by the end, it's all six piano players on two pianos, all rotating. No, um, well, that's amazing. So, so I, I've is that on that TV? Can, is that on YouTube? Can you find that? It's online somewhere else. Yeah, I'll, I'll find a clip of it. There's a little clip of me. The first, the first year I did it, the drummer was Gilson Davis from Squeeze, and then on bass and drums was Chaz and Dave, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the piano players. And then at the end of the night, he, um, Jules says, "Oh, can I bring my? Would you mind if I bring my friend Hugh on?" For a song, and obviously we just said, "Oh yeah, yeah, whatever." And the, the ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to stage, Mister Hugh Laurie. Yeah. And then Hugh Laurie comes on, and we did a tune with him. So that's been cool. But I've had this sort of association with a venue called Boysdale in London. There's four Boysdale clubs, which Jules is the patron of music of. Um, so Jules curates a lot of the entertainment on. He recommends good people to go in this in this club. So I do that for like two one week residency is a year and so I get to do a lot of work with him there I've just done a seven night thing with him at Boysdale in London which was called The Intimate Evening with Jules Holland so it was him on his own with Ruby Turner and they would sit and Q&A answer a few questions then I'd come on and play a few um, so yeah it was cool and then uh, he also hosts the an awards evening at Boysdale which I also have played that done a bit with and I remember last year or year before I got a phone call saying Right, Tom, Brian McFadden from Westlife has won the Best Male Vocalist of the Year Award. Um, would you like to come second? I said, yes, that's fine. So that's my claim to fame. I once came second to Brian McFadden from Westlife in the Best Male Vocalist Award. But, Gav, you said earlier about, um, I bet I can't wait to get back to it. What You've seen the difference in the football with having fans in the ground already even a limited amount of fans and that's exactly the same for what we do we yeah. need them we need the people there and well, you know i'm well, so excited i i said this on an earlier podcast i was chatting to um james from star sailor he's the lead singer of star sailor mm. podcast cool. with him. and we were chatting about the fact that you know you're trying to understand what it's like for those players in an empty stadium is exactly like yeah. doing a live stream <laughs> yeah, no odd work whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you get an extra when there's a crowd in, you get an extra 10 percent out of you. I, I'll hit notes that yeah. I won't hit if mm. I was just sat, sat stood in. Mm. It must be the same for them. Look, look at Sadio Mane since the crowd's been in, yeah, definitely. You yeah, know what I mean, mm -hmm. he's uh, he's yeah. a different player and it must be affecting him. So, yeah, fingers crossed. From well, I think we, I think we kind of forget it a little bit because I don't know about you, but I quite like watching it with the crowd noise. I know it's not great, but it's. It's better than without, I think. Mm. So, have you been watching it with or without the, the crowd noise? I've got, I've got a dodgy box, so I don't get a choice. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So, so you've just got it in Arabic, have you? Is yeah. that the, uh... <laughs> totally. Um, but, but listen, um, thanks for your time, mate. I really appreciate oh, it. You're welcome. Thanks and um, where, do you want to plug anything that you, you you've got? I mean, you did some plugging before without asking me. Yeah, I've just spent. I feel like I've just spent the last half an hour talking about myself. I don't feel like we have talked about football a lot. I tell you why a little football story. I know you're trying to palm me off here, Gav, but I I did play football when I was young. And look at this. Look at my little finger. You were in goal. I was in goal, messing around, and look. Now it doesn't bend, and that's great as a professional Does that mean piano you can player. Reach an extra couple of notes on the pitch. Got, got an extra note with me right hand, just wow. gives me shooting pains after every gig. <laughs> yeah. So that was the end of my professional football career. Well, when that happened. What about the rest of your body, Tom? You can play football. Oh, it's, uh, I'm in a perfect, perfect physical specimen, Gav. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Lovely stuff. Well, listen, uh, thanks very much for your time, mate. If you, you thanks, man. This on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the like button, click the bell for notifications for future stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. You take care. Thanks, man. Good to see you. See you soon.